Let me give you now some key words that'll help us to prepare for good communications. Key words. Number one, interest. To prepare for good communications, take a new interest in life. Here's a good pledge to make at the beginning of the day. I'm going to be more interested in this day. I'm going to see if I can get more from the day. Boy, it's easy if you're not careful to just try to get through the day. But sophisticated people learn to get from the day. They don't want a day to go by without gathering up some new ideas, some new impressions, new color, new nuances, new sense of worth and value. They gather from the day, interest. And here's two of the major subjects to study with interest, life and people. Develop a new sharper interest, new sharper focus on life and people. What's happening, what's going on. Now that new commitment to a new interest for the day will get you ready for the years to come with better communications. Because to say it well, you have to feel it well. To say it well, you have to know it. And to know it, you just got to go through the laborious process of gathering, extracting the information. So that's the first word, interest. Here's the second word, fascination. A bit beyond just simple interest. Interested people are probably satisfied that it ticks. It ticks. And that's good to know. It ticks. But fascinated people want to know what? What makes it tick? Fascinated people aren't satisfied usually with surface information. They've got to know more than just what appears. What's really going on? The hippies had a pretty good question in the 60s. What was it? The hippies. Good question they had. What's happening? That's a good question. What's happening? And sophisticated hippies say, what's really happening, right? <laughs> what is really going on? What's making things tick? What's making things happen? Why do people feel like they do and think like they think? What is the difference between success and failure? Who has the appetite and who doesn't have the appetite? This whole fascination about life and people and circumstances and society and money and banks and churches and sermons and books and records and life experiences and enterprise and nations and color and races and religion and a whole fascination for this wide panorama of life and life experiences. I'm telling you, if you'll take a new fascinated look at life and what's going on, it will now show up in color and sharpness in your future communications. It'll have a new reach and a new depth. It'll have a new insight, a new excitement. Now, I've got a good experiment for you to try. The next time you're tempted to be frustrated, see if you can turn it into fascination. How to turn frustration into fascination. That's a good skill to try to learn. I'm sitting on the freeway in Los Angeles. My airplane leaves in 45 minutes. The traffic is not moving an inch. I am now fascinated. <laughs> I'm telling you. Now, it doesn't work every time. <laughs> I'm willing to admit that. Nothing works every time. But can you imagine the extra value you'll get from a frustrating experience? If you just think about this, can I turn this frustrating experience into something fascinating? I'll learn a lot more from it if I'm fascinated by it than just frustrated by it. So just try that little key. Try to turn frustration into fascination. And in a frustrating experience, if a smile comes across your face, other people will wonder, you know, what's going on? But it'll just be private between you and me. The man taught me how to be fascinated, if possible, in a frustrating situation. Okay, turning frustration into fascination. The extra learning discipline, the extra learning skill. And I think this is part of it. Here's the next key word. This is a big one. Sensitivity. To really communicate well and to touch people in a wide range and from a wide range of experience, you've just got to have felt the experience. It's got to be part of you. Sensitivity training. Being touched by a wide range of human experience, perhaps even beyond your own. Incredible words said about the master teacher, Jesus. It said he was moved. Wow, that's a key word. It said he was moved with compassion. What was happening moved him. It touched him. Another phrase said he was touched. He was moved. He was affected. 
on more than one occasion, he cried. So part of that human drama of experience, I think, for us to really be able to reach people and touch people with words and ideas and emotion and phrases and sentences loaded with feelings, we've got to go into this area of sensitivity, being touched, being affected by our own lives as well as the lives of other people. Sensitivity. Being touched, being moved, this is part of the heavyweight stuff that starts to show up now in our language and in our communication. I've lived a rather sheltered life all my life, so I've had to really work on this. What do I know about tragedy? I've never had any tragedy. But part of the world is tragic. Part of life is tragic. And if you don't at least try to understand the dark side of life, the tragic side, the extreme sorrow side, your life is left a bit shallow. And sometimes when you live such a sheltered life, you just have to try to go outside of your own small world of sheltered experiences and see if you can't live as someone else might have lived or at least try to be touched by the experience. Now, you can't really know till you live it. I understand that, but at least you can try. And if you do your homework here in sensitivity for a wider range of experience than your own, I promise you that extra worth will show up in your conversation and in your communication. When I lived in Northern California, I used to go to San Francisco two, three times a year, spend a day in the Tenderloin for a farm boy from Idaho. The Tenderloin in San Francisco, what an experience. And if you just go spend a day, you get to see what we call the other side. And if you just spend a day there and walk the streets where those lonely walk and go eat where they eat and listen to some of those stories, you come away with a whole new sense of the great distance between failure and success. The whole distance between goodness and evil. Between despair and, and joy. And you come away with more of a, a sense of value. Because the true values of life come by the contrast. And unless you experience more of the contrast, even the values you consider valuable become a bit shallow if you don't understand the contrast. It's hard to really appreciate winning until you've done some losing. It's hard to appreciate success until you've done some failing. And if you've done some failing, success now becomes a much larger worth and value and commodity if you understand a bit of the other side. So part of this is just deliberately go where experiences beyond your own touch your life to get somewhat of an education as to the contrast of life and the differences. It'll educate your mind and educate your spirit. And sure enough, that extra worth will start showing up in your sentences and, and your words and They'll be weightier, they'll be heavier, they'll mean more when you talk to somebody.